Hi there, welcome back to this week's Icon video. Again, this week we are going to take a look at our past. We are going to be covering the Icon Reformer series of vehicles. So those of you that aren't already familiar with them, the idea behind the Reformers is redesign it usually thematically in the original design language. Sometimes we do like revisionist history and reposition how the perspective from which we des redesign the details. But anyway, all the uh, modern drivability updates and then a concourse full restoration of the cosmetics. Again, sometimes monkeyed with, sometimes very stock in the design. It just depends on the build. So the very first one we did was a early Willis Jeepster Roadster. These are super, super groovy. And like the derelict version of the Willis Overland Wagon we did, this was another body style based on the foundational tooling of the military era Willis Jeeps, but then evolved for um, daily use. And they're really, really interesting. They did versions of these up through the decades, but this was the truest sort of original series and all steel construction, whereas at the end of the line, they were fiberglass and kind of cheesy, although that would be a fun build to do as well. We really liked the kind of pre-war styling elements of this first generation. We did it in a very stock color palette, that beautiful sort of canary, creamy, yellow, and, uh, two-toned it. Um, we did a fairly conservative mechanical approach on this one. It did feature a full Art Morris and two-wheel drive chassis, four-wheel disc brakes, etc. We ran a GM four-cylinder motor, um, which actually moved along pretty damn well, and uh, manual trans. Um, we did a modern audio system. We changed up the interior layout, improved the ergonomics, but kept it very vintage feeling. Um, original owner still owns that car. He's still partying on with it. And uh, it remains in just wonderful shape last time uh, I saw any images of it. Right after the Willis, I had personally always loved the arguably ugly but beautiful to some uh, early power wagon and D200 Dodge crew cab. So we had an existing client who also loved them and he commissioned the first of the D200 crew cabs that we ever built. It was a beautiful Maserati off white color, um, bison interior. Uh, we did extensive modifications to it. This was one of our cross platform builds where we actually cheated and used one of the best of the late model Dodge four wheel drive truck platforms. It was a turbo diesel. We partnered with our buddy Gail Banks at Banks Power to create significant uh, increases to the performance and just a big ass bus of a truck. Uh, one-off machined rear view mirrors and trim and dash knobs and badging, but uh, again, in a very true sort of 65 design language. And uh, that truck seems to have been a crowd favorite. It's changed hands once or twice. I think it's now in Texas and uh, really, really cool build. Technically challenging to get the modern Dodge platform to believe it was still in its native configuration because we wanted to keep all the electronics and all the little subtle benefits and how it performs and reacts. And for serviceability, we wanted to keep that stock-ish modern Dodge system uh, working. And uh, we succeeded at that. It came out really nice, beautiful truck. Really funky glass on that one. We did the, what we used to do. You know, it's actually architectural glass that has a interesting reflective character to it that we then temper. Total disaster to do shrinkage rates different in different axes depending on the glass. We've actually stopped using that glass, but um, just beautiful. And when uh, it's really worth the effort, it comes out really, really cool. Next, we did a 1995 Land Rover Defender 90, so the two-door short wheelbase version. So I love them, 
and I hate them. Uh, what do I love? I love the purity of the aesthetic, like that sketch it from any angle and it's just gorgeous and it just has such a, a unique design language that you immediately know what it is. What I don't like is the construction quality and I see a series of businesses uh, alive today or coming and going that seek to modernize sort of icon style build these but at the end of the day there's so many constraints there's so many restrictions to the original execution quality that in my humble opinion I think there's something you should just put in the box call it a ag tool military simple vehicle and pretty much leave it stock with minor upgrades because at the end of a massive rebuild I still felt there were little details that really should be evolved but couldn't be uh, when using the factory body. Uh, client loved it. It's traded hands, I believe, one time. We did it in a matte satin black. We did extensive custom trim, massive changes to the powertrain. Uh, we worked with the guys in Europe at Twisted UK for axles, transfer case, and other rover-specific solutions. Those guys do really nice work. And it was a really cool truck. Um, my team was about ready to kill me, uh, especially when I promptly announced, hey guys, we're going to do another one. So next we did a 1993 Land Rover 110, the four-door, the long wheelbase, even, even more beautiful. On that one, we did a lot of the same approach in trim and ergonomic improvements and powertrain. We did a couple things differently on that versus the D90 based on that learning curve and experience. And it came out super cool, super fast. Client loves it. Um, we get asked to do them uh, to this day, but my team literally threatened mutiny should we ever do another one. Like the stupidest stuff down to like the grill. We'd model the new grill, we'd have it all happy in CAD, it was all proper 90 degree corners and God forbid symmetry. And then you actually go to place it on the Defender and like one corner's 89.2, the other corner's 92 point whatever, it was just, yeah, so no, we're not going to do any more of those. Uh, as sort of uh, therapy for the team after the two defenders, uh, we were asked to do a, another D200 four-door crew cab, six-pack, whatever you want to call it, of the early Dodge pickups, and this time with a gas-powered uh, powertrain, different cosmetic choices. Uh, we painted it this lovely early Fiat kind of olive martini, olive green, with a really interesting uh, high buff leather burgundy interior. That truck was so beautiful. Um, plenty of power, came out great. Client loves it, still is owned by the original client for whom we built it. And yes, we kind of cheated because it was a platform we had done before and we said we'd never repeat. But it being gas, not diesel, different cosmetic thematic, enough excuses to do it again. Plus, we really love that platform. So that truck's a beauty, one of my favorites, and a really cool uh, color palette combo that was fun to exercise. FJ40. And this is an Icon Reformer project. We actually built this truck. We started back in May of 2009, and the goal was to keep it looking dead stock 64, but for it not to drive as such. So how many 64 40s can do this? A one-off Icon Reformer out of it meaning not the typical sort of industrial mod icon design, but something decidedly more retro and under the radar. So here it is done. This project took, oh gosh, maybe 20 months to complete. Uh, it was really a fun one. The client's just wonderful, and him and his father-in-law were pretty involved throughout the build. And the, the goal here was to integrate as... Much of the sort of uh, enhancements and drivability gains of an icon, but into a design that is decidedly you know, more mellow, more retro. Now that being said, the colors, the interior, the chassis work, the suspension, the powertrain, the climate control, the HVAC, the steering, none of it's original. 
but it was kind of a fun design challenge for us to uh, basically if you're not a Bronco geek you wouldn't know the difference. So next we did a uh, K5 Blazer. Um, what do I remember about that build? Basically super clean, vintage Fiat, uh, gorgeous blue color, uh, very constrained design language on it, uh, very limited jewelry and enhancements, but similar mechanical outline and powertrain updates and creature comforts and yada, yada, yada that uh, we did on the next one, which was the GMC Jimmy version of the same platform. Came out really cool. Um, I thought the Ford Bronco construction quality as compared to the Land Cruisers of the same era was pretty bad. And then I learned to respect it when I did these Jimmys and K5s. They're just not well thought through. There were so many like weird rust issues hiding under layers of spot welded metal that it really kind of sucked. And the tops are kind of crude, but the end design's good. Client loved it and they spent uh, several, several years with it. He still owns it to this day, at least last I heard. Next on the Icon Reformer list was a 1970 GMC Jimmy. Now on this one, uh, this is a good example of us deviating from the original design language a little bit. So we took a more technical, modern, kind of new school approach to how we redesigned all the trim and details on the vehicle while in the mechanical equation, we, we stayed, we upgraded the axles, we did keep it leaf sprung. Um, we updated, of course, the electronics and the powertrain and the audio and the sound editing and the textiles and the touch points and the tactile values, yada, 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 yada. And that one, uh, really cool truck, still belongs to the original client. And last I heard, it is doing quite well. Now, this was kind of a weird one. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much to share with you. Just a couple quick shots here and you can't freeze frame. Hopefully, maybe you can see them real briefly. But the whole point of this vehicle was to be under the radar, get the hell out of Dodge, multi-state business road trip. So it was set up to work as a mobile office. It was set up to be very stealth, very under the radar. In fact, to the extent that uh, when we originally posted the video of it and a couple uh, media outlets did stories on it, the client freaked out and contacted us and asked to take it all down. So, of course, we have to respect that, and we did. But the long and short of it is it was a 96 Chevy Caprice X Miami Dade uh, police car undercover. Like, that was subtle, right? Um, that we did a bunch of, shall we say, sort of James Bondy stealth stuff to, it was quite challenging uh, build um, because we had to do extensive updates to get the handling and horsepower and performance specs that our client demanded. And it was it's really not a good time for GM, so plastic fantastic, just plastic crap everywhere. And we machined a lot of bits, we evolved a lot of bits, but we we're still fighting just layers and layers of crap plastic. So. I don't think you're able to see me do a 90s vehicle again, but I liked the client's design mandate and usage um, description for the vehicle, and it was super fun. So if you ever see a blacked out Caprice uh, with police push bars uh, going by you at a seemingly impossible speed, it might be it. Next came a 1965, what Ford called a six pack, a crew cab of the F series pickup truck. Now my personal daily driver for many years was a 65 three quarter ton F250 long bed. And I loved it. I put a 351 Pantera Cleveland with a C6 in it and stuff, but beat up old lacquer paint. Man, I took that thing through Mexico and across the U.S. several times. So I've always loved that 6566 design language for Ford. And interestingly, it had a lot of design language that is linear with the Bronco, like the rear quarter panel shape on the bed and the rear quarter on the Bronco. And uh, I, I, they just represented a brief window in time. A couple years prior, the bed kind of didn't match the front and then 67 they abandoned the whole party and came out with the next gen but um, that truck is 
one of my favorites. Absolutely gorgeous uh, two-tone, uh, silver and white um, textile plaid and leather interior. Um, controversially built on a Dodge platform because at that time we didn't really feel the Ford, especially the Ford uh, diesel platforms really had close to the same uh, integrity and quality that the Cummins did. And that truck is just, just beautiful. It's actually um, remained fairly famous in its circles. And uh, it's going to be on the cover of a magazine that I think hits the stands right around the time this video does, thereabouts. But just a beautiful, beautiful truck. Extensive CNC custom trim. Lots of CAD development. Uh, that's one of the first ones uh, that we started to embrace 3D scanning to uh, capture surface profiles to efficiently be able to develop new stuff. The original video on that one, although it's pretty old, it's better than most of my videos of that time. I was just around then trying to up my game on the video styles. Um, but that one really, really, really beautiful, beautiful truck. Um, next you have the 65. Kaiser Wagoneer, gorgeous. Client originally wanted us to do one of the late 1980s Wagoneers, but they're just crap quality and kind of overplayed. I really like the Kaiser front end with that cool Ford leaning grill. Um, the dash is cleaner, the construction is a lot more honest, so that gave us the quality of the first generation and a lot more freedom to pick and choose throughout the decades, the different trim details and elements that we liked. Rare for us to use vinyl, but it was a beach vehicle, so we did a marine rated vinyl and textile interior, simplified the dash, hid the AC, uh, coilover Fox Racing, LS3, uh, killer audio, bunch of nice thingies. We left the windows manual because the client liked the manual vibe of it. Another beautiful early Fiat color. I seem to like uh, the early European, especially Fiat and Porsche. Uh, colors for some of these earlier reformers and uh, that that's a, a beautiful truck it recently resold um, the client who we built it for actually sold it to another client of ours coincidentally kind of cool uh, okay let's see what's next uh, 1970 ford short bed ranger pickup oh my goodness what a gorgeous Gorgeous truck, uh, one of my all-time favorites that uh, lives here in Southern California still, uh, has a really cool retro vibe to it. All my design work on that one, again, was more thematic to under the radar retro vintage stock. If you didn't know any better at first glance, we elevated the interior instead of vinyl. We had a leather made that had the texture comparable to the parchment vinyl of the air of that truck and did really cool textile inserts. Um, kind of a bummer, the client actually ended up not liking that interior, what? And he redid it. Fortunately, he had Sid Shavers do it, who's an absolute rock star in the hot rod upholstery world. And it, it came out really good. I thought I was gonna hate it, but it actually looked great. He did uh, black leather, black rugs, leather hemmed, and a darker uh, thematic uh, textile plaid insert. So it works good. I still prefer what we did, but that truck was just a, a gorgeous truck. And again, uh, it's one of those that keeps percolating in my brain as a really interesting potential full line for Icon, especially as since we built that truck, there's much more support for those vehicles as far as parts availability, much more love for them. And um, they seem to be bubbling up in people's nostalgic memories. So that's it. Less reformers than derelicts. Did you catch that? We do have several in queue. Uh, some of them very interesting, quite diverse. Um, we've got uh, Cherokee two-door coming up. We've got a original three-door, now four-door Suburban coming up. That's going to be a monster. Uh, we have a Ferrari 250 GTE, a Volvo P1800, like really interesting and several more as well. Um, but it's really, again, that's kind of the fun of the platform is to try all these different funky ideas. So that's all I got for this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Please subscribe. If you don't, please send to your friends, ask any questions, press like, all the things the algorithms do appreciate. And uh, be good to yourselves. Be good to the planet. We'll see you next week.